your body will go, whoa, I need to slow down. So our thyroid takes a hit. Our brain function, we get brain fog. We're just tired because our body is screaming. There's something wrong. So you can't supplement yourself out of that. You can't medicate yourself out of that. You have to take a holistic approach. And that's what Dr. and Eric and I, or Paul Cabbage and I, we preach that and we actually do that in, in our practices. Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode. And today's special guest is Dr. Kelly Halderman. And she is a clinician. She's a lecturer and researcher. She also serves as an academic dean of students as the Kingdom College of Natural Health. Her passion is detoxification, nutrition, uh, healthcare, and she also specializes in Lyme disease. And you actually had Lyme disease yourself and beat it. Can you just tell us a little bit about that journey and how you became Lyme free? Sure, and I I would just start by saying that I don't consider myself Lyme free. I think that our Mm. body is, you know, it hosts a terrain of, of pathogens and, you know, we really never, um, I don't think we completely clear ourselves of anything. We just learn to live in symbiosis. We learn to strengthen our natural defenses. So I, you know, when I got Lyme, I was a train wreck. I was um, not eating well. I was, um, practicing traditional medicine, just extremely, um, stressed out. And my body was just, was not prepared to deal with uh, any infection that I had. And that, that um, really was the key to um, regaining my health. And I have done so 110%. I'm, I'm the healthiest I've ever been in my entire life because I strengthened my body's natural ability to detox, to um, combat inflammation. I really take stress management really seriously. And that's really how I clawed my way out of um, that Lyme disease hole. It was just taking in account everything that goes on with our health. You know, it's never one pill or one thing. Um, and I'll show you, you agree with that. It's, it's a, it's a compendium of things that we have to get serious about and we leave no stone unturned. And that's how I practice is that I look at every aspect of a person, um, physical, chemical, emotional, microbial, all of those categories. And we really dive in because everyone's different. Everyone's unique in what's stressing out their body. Um, but the language, of our body when it's um, when it's under stress is inflammation. So I really I try to start there with with everyone in my care. Um, so you and Dr. Eric Balkovich co-authored a book called The Thyroid Debacle, and I love the name of that title. Oh my gosh, it's my favorite. And you two focus on more of the root causes of thyroid issues instead of using medication in attempt to treat these issues. So what are some of the top root causes for thyroid issues you talk about in your book? Sure. So I mean, that when I trained in medicine, it was a pill for every ill. So I was really good at handing out, oh yeah, the hypothyroidism, here's your pill. But did it really make sense? I mean, they didn't, it wasn't a lack of Synthroid that was their problem. There were root causes, but I was never taught those. So when I went back to naturopathic medical school, I started to learn about how things such as viruses, heavy metals, um, gut dysbiosis, a bad diet, um, stress, just stress in general, can really be the root cause of why our body is shutting down our thyroid hormone activation. And that's where it's, Um, we're looking at it as a debacle because there's so many people struggling with hypothyroidism and they're given a prescription and they're never asked to delve into why. So that's what our book goes into. It goes into those categories. Again, the physical, chemical, emotional, microbial, it could be 17 things in those categories that are causing your body so much stress that it's actually deactivating. It's actually on purpose creating that hypothyroidism to try and protect you. And if anybody wants to nerd out, little, uh, learn a little bit more about why your body deactivates and why your body goes into this mechanism to protect you, there's a paper called the cell danger response. And if you Google that, it's by um, Dr. Robert Navio. It talks about how when our body is under a threat, such as if we get the flu, right? So if we get the flu, our body's like, you need to lay down, you need to be fatigued, you need to not do anything because all resources are being jettisoned to help us get over the flu. Well, the cell danger response can happen if you have Lyme, if you have a virus, if you're completely stressed out in a terrible relationship, your body will go, whoa, I need to slow down. So 
our thyroid takes a hit. Our brain function, we get brain fog. We're just tired because our body is screaming, there's something wrong. So you can't supplement yourself out of that. You can't medicate yourself out of that. You have to take a holistic approach. And that's what Dr. And Eric and I, Eric Balkevich and I, we preach that. And we actually do that in, in our practices. We take people through all the things that can be causing that root cause of hypothyroidism. And we try to correct them all over, over time. You know, it's not just a magic wand you know, going to wave. And I, I constantly do that. I have hypothyroidism myself. I'm constantly looking through my categories. What's physically stressing me out? Do I, is there EMF all over me? You know, do I, need, do I need to put my phone down? Do I need to protect myself? Chemical, what kind of potions and lotions am I putting on my, my face and my, my skin and my hair? What am I eating? What chemicals am I eating? What, you know, am I painting my nails? Um, microbial, do I have any um, latent gut infections? Do I have um, Epstein-Barr, any viruses that are um, still hanging around and then emotional just keep that emotional health in check I do the brain tap is one of the things that I do it's like meditation on steroids um, and all this information I'm talking about just to kind of people don't need to be writing this that's all on my website it's drkellyhalderman.com I'm sure we'll link to it in the show notes things that I love and I do to stay healthy so that's what I do personally for my health too. I'm constantly going through those categories and surveying them so that I don't have to take medications and my body is relieved of trying to, to pull myself down because there's the stressors are gone. So currently you're, you're personally not taking any thyroid medicine at all? No, I don't have to. Okay. And then are you checking it? Like how often would you say you're checking it to every, see? Every three months. Okay. And, and then, then if, some people need to be on thyroid replacement. Some people 100% need to be on Synthroid. They need to be on Armor. They need to be taking glandulars. And that's something you discuss with your licensed healthcare provider, right? Um, but I do keep tabs on it. I, I really watch it. I can almost tell when I'm starting to kind of have some symptoms. I'm like, okay, what's going on? I try and keep it in check um, and figure out the root cause again. Now, what kind of doctor were you before you became a naturopath? So I was a family practice doctor with family the University practice. of Minnesota. Yeah. So I, I, I was in the trenches with, you know, first line of defense. And um, I, thought it, I thought it was wonderful. I thought we were really helping people. But then I myself got sick. And, you know, I kind of had this thing in the back of my mind. I'd go to sleep at night and I'd think, am I really helping people by giving them pills? You know, I, but you're just in this, you're in this environment where that's, that's what you do. That's what you do. Um, when I got sick and was handed pills and never given a reason of why my body was um, revolting against me, I was like, that's not going to work for me. And that's when I started to learn about discovering root causes. Awesome. Now, um, for you, a lot of people who are naturopaths or holistic doctors, more, they are kind of anti-synthroid. It's funny because like people who are like endocrinologists and just regular doctors, they are like synthroid, 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 right? And then people who are more on the holistic side, they're like anti-synthroid, anti-synthroid. Um, so when you see patients, do you, there, you're saying there's maybe sometimes that you actually think Synthroid is better for them than well, an Armour Thyroid or? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're kind of getting a little technical here, but you, you know, if you have anti-TPO antibodies, you're, you, the literature would say that taking glandulars or taking things like Armour would, would not be um, the best idea. But again, I'm not practicing medicine on this podcast. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to tell people what to do or what not to do. You can die from uh, hypothyroidism. So don't be your own doctor. Um, find a doctor who will listen to you, will um, honor what, what you're saying and how your body's responding. But I don't think it's as cut and dry as naturopaths don't like Synthroid, medical doctors like Synthroid. I think that we're really gaining ground on the amalgamation of the two fields. And I hope that Dr. Eric, our, our book, the thyroid debacle, I really hope that um, we start to even, we're, you know, we're so polarized and we don't have to be that way. We can all learn from, e from each other um, in, in that aspect. So in this book, you cover a new model of thyroid care. What is the new model you discuss in your book? Okay, so the, the old model is the Synthroid. You know, you have a hypothyroidism, your TSH is high, your T4 is low, here's your prescription. So the new model is why? Why is this happening? And 
going into that is the deactivation, and I went into this a little bit, the deactivation of thyroid hormone at the cellular level. It sounds really complicated, but all it means is that things are stressing your body out and your body's so smart, it wants to protect you. So it actually deactivates the, horm the thyroid hormone in, a, in your cells. So it's not necessarily a gland problem. It's not like, oh, all of a sudden my, my thyroid gland's not working anymore. Well, it's like, does that make any sense? I mean, does, I mean why, why millions and millions of people are, are, are thyroid glands not working anymore? So the, the gist is, is that we're looking at the root cause of trying to get your body to stop deactivating your thyroid hormone. And if you can convince your body that it's safe, that, that, you know, that there's the stress is lessened, the physical, chemical, emotional, microbial stress is lessened. Um, you can start to see that labs will get better and people start feeling better. Now you personally said you yourself have Hashimoto's mm -hmm. or, and can you talk a little bit about, did you, did it affect your weight and how is your energy and weight now? Oh yeah, it tanked my energy and I was gaining weight. I was really puffy and I would, you know, I went vegan. I was trying to really help myself like calories in, calories out, but that wasn't the problem. Um, the problem was all the stress that was, was going on. And again, um, I had Lyme disease, so that was a, that was a microbial stress. Um, but you know, I, I myself, um, you, you know, there's, there's nutrients that we can use. Obviously our body needs selenium and some iodine. Um, to help with the natural physiological processes of, of um, thyroid metabolism. So I just, I keep that in check. And again, I, I was able to overcome a lot of the stresses that were, that were really weighing down and causing my thyroid to not work. So, you know, right now I, I, um, I don't do a whole lot, quote unquote, for my thyroid gland. I just do a lot for my body, for my, my um, overall health and well-being. So you have an article on your website about echo hydrogen enriched water. What exactly is this and what are the benefits of drinking this versus just drinking regular water? So echo uh, hydrogen water by Synergy Science, um, you know, first of all, the, the company itself, they are owned by um, uh, some of the best, finest practitioners, clinicians. I mean, this, this company knows what the, they know what they're doing with the science. So that's what really initially drew me to um, researching hydrogen water is Paul Bertiero. He's a naturopath and he was really into root causes and the root cause of all disease. If you really, really look at it, is inflammation, right? So the hydrogen molecular hydrogen, when it's infused in water and you can go to molecular hydrogen Institute, you can go to my website, Dr. Kelly Halderin, you can go to synergy science. It all has piles of research about how, when you ingest molecular hydrogen, it upregulates your NERF2 pathway. Now your NERF2 pathway is your anti-aging pathway. It activates um, all kinds of enzymes that help um, reduce inflammation. So you can drink the water and you can reduce the inflammation in your body. And again, if we think of inflammation being the root cause of all disease, that's why I really love molecular hydrogen. There's no side effects. The whole family can drink molecular hydrogen. Um, it's selectively upregulating those pathways. So it's not like you're just bombarding your body um, with a lot of um, unnecessary um, upregulation because it's a balance. Everything's a balance, right? So the molecular hydrogen is a lot um, easier to have to have that balance. They do make they make a machine that's you know that the echo machine that makes hydrogen water. And, um, and they also make tablets where you can put them in a water bottle and, and drink those. Um, I mean, they, they quench free radicals. It's, it's really, really powerful um, um, device and tool that I've really implemented in because again, it's just like the whole family can, can use it um, and it's um, well-researched, well-studied. So in my newest edition of my book, Waste Away, I talk about how people don't have to deprive themselves when it comes to food, but everyone needs to decide for themselves what are their red light, yellow light, and green light foods, where these are like, this is completely off limits for me. My body does not respond well to this. Yellow light's like, eh, it feels okay. And green light's, I feel super on this. So what are those foods for you? What are your red light and yellow light foods? Um, well, definitely... Well, it's, 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 it's tough to, to actually determine what those are sometimes because you can have a delayed 
food reaction that where you eat something on a Monday and then on a Friday, mm. Saturday, you're feeling the effects from it. So I, I do do some food testing, although the reliability of it isn't that good. I think our bodies are the best indicator, but again, it can be a little bit tricky. Um, I would say red light foods because I have autoimmune disease or gluten and dairy. I don't do, I don't do well with those. Um, it's not like I eat them and then I feel bad immediately though. So, um, I, I definitely just, just stay away from those. Cause there's enough research to say that, um, there's molecular mimicry and you just, you don't want to do that when you have, um, autoimmune disease, but, um, you know, I've done different, different food tests, um, and just kind of determined through, through that. And again, like through my genetics, so I'm really into genetics. I'm certified by the, um, by methyl genetic nutrition institute um going in and looking at at um, genetics such as i'm weak in processing oxalates so i don't eat a lot of foods with oxalates in them um, i have a hard time um getting rid of my sulfites so i i stay away from a lot of sulfite foods and um that's where you get into that personalized medicine that's more than just a food allergy test um but i, I really think that you know, you're, the best bet would be get on like a really nice anti-inflammatory diet, elimination diet, and then slowly put these things back in and see and see how your body responds. So talk about some of those uh, foods that have sulfites in it that you don't feel great on. Um, so smoked foods, um, red wine, um, I think some of the, the cabbage and the, with the, the sulfur foods like uh, broccoli and cabbage and things like that. It's just moderation. It's just, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't restrict any food groups other than really gluten, a hundred and 10% and dairy. I'll eat it like maybe twice a year and just a little bit. Um, but there, but that's really kind of the moral of that one. Well, can you walk us, I saw a ring. Are you wearing an aura ring? Yeah. Oh Yeah. I just got, look, I just got one today. I, I mean, I guess I got ever. it last night and I just wore it today for the very first time. I, I don't even hardly know how to use it yet because I just got it. So tell me about, do you love it? I love my art. I can't live with it. every podcast you'll ever see me on. I, all, I mean, I have, I have it on every day. Um, I use it primarily to track my HRV. So that's what I really have always encouraged people to do is that if you feel, if you don't feel good, and you go on, let's say you're going to go on a supplement. You're like, I'm going to try this. My neighbor said it made me feel better. Okay, I'm going to go on that. Well, your body will respond by increasing your HRV if that supplement is helping you. So that's an objective piece of data other than, I don't know if I feel good. I'm not quite sure. Um, so let's say that you start like an exercise program and you start really going for it and you over-exercise, your heart rate variability will drop. And then your body's like, that's too much exercise. So you can use it for that. I, I use it to track my deep sleep because deep sleep is when our lymphatics are draining our brain. I mean, if you're not getting good deep sleep, you're in trouble. You got to do a lot of stuff. And there's a lot of resources on my website about how to get more deep sleep, but I'm fanatical about tracking my sleep because if you're, if you're not sleeping, if you're not getting adequate, not even just amounts of sleep, but enough REM sleep, enough deep sleep, um, your health is in jeopardy. Mm. So walk us through, I like to ask all my guests that come on the show, walk us through the day in the life of Kelly. What did you eat yesterday? What time did you eat it? And what did your day look like? Um, so I partake in 18 hours of um, time restricted eating. So 18 hours of every day, I don't eat anything. Um, it took me a long time to get there. I mean, I was raised on fruity pebbles and pop tarts, right? So um, I was not metabolically fit to, to jump into fasting. I mean, I couldn't even go like an hour and I'm like, oh, I'm shaky, I'm hypoglycemic, you know? But so it really takes, you can't just go, oh, um, Dr. Kelly looks really good. She does, she fasts for 18 hours a day, I'm gonna do that. I mean, it took, it took me a long time and you, you work with your healthcare provider to just try and just, just, just tighten the window. You know, that's what I would say. Just try and work on tightening the window of how many hours you eat a day. So my body is in a state of autophagy for 18 hours a day. So autophagy is cellular cleaning, right? So you have the, the two processes of autophagy and mTOR. So mTOR is the building in our body. We're building new things. Babies are made because of, of, of mTOR, which just think of that building. And then the opposing mechanism is autophagy. So when you're eating, 
you're in building phase and it knocks out your ability to vacuum out your body, right? And that's not good. If you have residual, you know, um, proteins in your body or you're killing lime or, you know, you have um, extra, you know, just extra debris that your body needs to get rid of. Um, that's why I do it. And so my, when, during my six hour eating window, which I start eating around noon, um, I'll break my fast with a green juice, um, or some vegetables. Um, and then I usually have, um, I usually have a salad. I have protein on it. So it just depends on what I'm in the mood for like chicken or, um, I beef. I mean, I eat all, all, all meats typically, um, except for pork. And, um, then I'll usually do, um, dinner with my family. So I'll try to make something that, um, that everybody likes. I have three small kids, so um, we don't always agree on everything. But um, then I'll just, I'll usually, I'll drink a ton of water during the day. Um, I do drink some black coffee during um, during my fast, but it just depends on how, how busy I am. Um, I do take, I do take a lot of supplements and um, I'm very um, methodical about which supplements I choose. And I, I really have um, narrowed it down. So I'm not taking a, a a ton of them, but I'm taking things to support my genetic weaknesses. I'm taking things to support autophagy. I'm taking things to support um, my thyroid, you know, just my, the metabolism of my body. So I, and I have an article of, on that on my website as well. Can you tell us, share with us just the website? I mean, the, um, the supplements that you personally take each day? Um, off the top of my head. I take uh, nicotinamide riboside because I have problems with my um, sirtuins. Um, I take um, professional health products has an autophagy assist, which has berberine, lithium, resveratrol, things that help the cellular cleaning. Cause I really think that in this, you know, even EMF will shut down autophagy. So there's so many things that shut and it's so critical. Um, a kind of a clue that your, your autophagy isn't working real well is if you have age spots on your hands and you really shouldn't. So um, that's why I kind of look at people right away and I'm like, okay, you can kind of see that the, the you're not cellular cleaning. It's getting caught in your vacuoles. Um, what else do I take? I take plant sterols. I take professional health products as a selenium, methionine, iodine. It's from kelp. So it's from a natural source. Um, what else do I take? Uh, you know, I kind of just mix it up depending on, on the day. I'll take uh, black seed oil. I'll take phospholipids. I take a ton of phosphocytocholine. I formulated a product called phase 2.5 bile support because I don't have a gallbladder. And I think a root cause of why people are sick in general is they are not moving their bile and they're not getting their toxins out. So I formulated that product, um, phase 2.5, and that has artichoke to support the liver, um, conjugating factors in it. It has changed my life that has, I take an intestinal binder so that when I am dumping toxins into my colon, that, the, that they bind to um, this intestinal binder and that's called phase three by professional health products. Um, and I take a lot of um, digestive enzymes for a systemic effect on an empty stomach. Um, that, those are by US enzymes. I really like, um, I love systemic enzymes. I think they're really important um, and they're, they're pretty darn safe. So, and then I take digestive enzymes and HDL with everything I eat. Awesome. Probably a lot more, but I can't remember off the top of my <laughs> All right. Well, let's jump right into the listener questions. This is from Jen in New Jersey. Hypothyroidism runs in my family, and lately I've been experiencing some common symptoms. I've been exhausted, put on a few pounds, and even mood swings from time to time. I haven't officially been diagnosed with hypothyroidism, but since it runs in the family, I figured I'm bound to inherit it. I like to have a glass of wine or two every night to unwind from my busy day. And I've read that actually drinking alcohol in moderation can decrease the risk of de developing hypothyroidism. Is this actually true? And are there certain types of alcohol that does or does not help this? Well, I've never heard that drinking wine can decrease your risk. And I literally, my half my day job is, is researching on PubMed, which is the, you know, that's where you get your medical science published studies. Um, so, you know, I would say that if, if, if you're, if you're not at your ideal weight, if you're not at your ideal energy that I would cut alcohol out, alcohol is a mitochondrial poison. It, it's toxic to your liver. Yes. There are some benefits to the ingredients in red wine, such as resveratrol, but then, you know, maybe talk to your licensed practitioner about resveratrol and a, and that other comment about it runs in my family. Um, 
yes, you know, you can have um, some genetic predispositions, of course, to hypothyroidism, but I try to look at the whole, the epigenetics, like what's weighing on the genetics, which, what's causing that, you know, her to be stressed out, her to be, um, you know, not at her ideal weight. And then again, you just, you go through those categories. So buy a copy of my book, The Thyroid Debacle. We teach you how to go through those categories. And we're also going to have a master's class for, for lay people on going through those categories and you can do this, you know, you can, you can go through and you can look at all the things and you can start to take the weight off of, of, of the stress and the inflammation in your body and make huge, huge changes. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the episode so far, but as you know, I've interviewed over a thousand women and every time I've watched a thin eater eat, I realize that maintaining a healthy weight is a skill that can be taught and mastered over time. That's why I created a video course that will teach you all the tips that I learned to help me lose over 30 pounds. It's way more powerful to watch the thin eaters than even to listen or to read it. Go to chantalrayway.com video for a free glimpse. If you're wanting to take yourself to the next level, everyone needs a coach. Every professional player has a coach. We want to come alongside you and help you in your journey. Go to ChantalRayway.com slash coaching. I just had someone listen to the audiobook three times and she just emailed me and she said by her listening to the audiobook three times, that's what did it. That's what allowed her to really lose the weight. We have an amazing offer for you. It's the second edition of my book, which has tons more information. It has the audiobook, the ebook. It normally runs for $29.99. You can get it today for $4.99. Go to ChantelRayway.com slash deal to get it. Now back to the show. All right. This next one is Sarah from Milwaukee. Back in June, I went hiking on a family vacation and ended up getting bit by a tick. I found it on me the day after we got back from camping and immediately pulled it off me. For the past couple of weeks, I've had really low energy and felt very achy. I thought it was just probably hormones, but I can't seem to shake it. Could it be related to the tick bite? Yeah, you should probably go see a doctor. <laughs> I would think that, you if, uh, you know, um, sounds like not, it's more than a coincidence. So go, go in to, you know, go see a licensed provider right away. All right, next one is from Maria in Brooklyn. I took the 23andMe food sensitivity test a while ago and found out that I'm a high risk of getting gluten, of getting celiac disease. I love my pasta. Yes, of course, I'm Italian. I eat it almost every meal. But being a very high risk for getting celiac disease means that I should probably watch my gluten intake and eventually cut it out of my diet completely, right? I just don't know how I could give it up completely unless I absolutely had to. So um, I think that that warrants uh, an actual test for celiac disease um, by again, a, a healthcare provider. And so gluten, you know, if you have celiac disease, um, I think your risk of death is like 30% higher than the population and your lifespan is very much decreased. It's a very, very serious condition and it's linked to other autoimmune diseases. Um, so that's when you just look at, you know, you have a hard talk with yourself about, you know, how long do you want to live and, and what, what kind of quality of life do you want? So, um, you know, if, if, if I had celiac disease, it's a zero tolerance. It's where you're going to restaurants and you're asking, you know, was this even prepared with something that touched gluten? Um, because it's so, um, it's, it's so dangerous and I don't mean to be doom and gloom, but it's empowering to know. And for, if you have information that can change your life that's empowering. And then you just, you move toward that direction as best you can um, with the resources you have. And, you know, lo and behold, you may feel amazing and go, I don't even know ever why I you know, had the pasta because you know, they have a comparison to them. So I think that's, there's a lot of psychology that goes into that, that as well. And it is a tough diagnosis. It does run in my family as well. Um, but well, I guess yeah. what she's saying is she took a 23andMe test, which that is, it's basically a DNA test I know. that what tells you about your, oh yeah, your health. It tells you about your predispositions your to it. It doesn't, yes. it doesn't diagnose anything. So, right. So 23andMe is just your genetic blueprint. And I read mm -hmm. those every day. So she, need, you know, you need to go in and, and see just because on, on 23andMe, it says that you have a predisposition right. where um, your MTHFR may be impaired. 
that does not mean that it's not working. Go in and see what your levels are um, on in your blood in vivo, and that'll tell you. Awesome. Well, where can our listeners go to follow you and find out more about your work? So everything is at drkellyhalderman.com. So D-R-K-E-L-L-Y-H-A-L-D-E-R-M-A-N. Um, and again, we'll, I, I'm always posting free articles, really good information for people. You can, you can email me from that site. You can follow me on Instagram from that site, Facebook from that site. Um, and we'll be giving away a free copy of the thyroid debacle. So for your listeners, so awesome. just go in, type in your, um, your email address, and then, um, we'll get you in a, um, a, a drawing for that so that we'll, we'll get that copy to you. But I think that that is something where I think your listeners are really like it. We touch on diet. I know that, um, you know, you'll, it'll be right up your alley too. And then of course, we're going to be having that, that class, um, eventually for, um, for the lay person to really take control of your health. Right. Cause that's kind of what we're faced with right now is, is doing that, but we can do it. And then last thing, I know on your website, you've got two different under supplements. You've got Tomorrow's Nutrition and US Enzymes. Is there any of those products on there that you're like, these are my favorite? Like I absolutely, out of the different products on there, this is like, do not pass go, go ahead and get it. <laughs> Yes, the uh, definitely sun fiber. Oh, sun. So I think we, our diets. Really and which one is that one on? That's that. Well, that well, that's in. If you go to my website, it has a store. It has a store there, and, and sun fiber is um, a prebiotic that just completely nourishes your gut microbiome because we're really good at putting probiotics in, putting bugs in, but the terrain is all messed up. So it's like if we're planting a garden and it's all rocks and we throw seeds on it, it's like, it's not going to grow. It's not going to help. So I'm really, um, I'm, I'm a big, big, big fan of prebiotics. So the sun fiber is something that, um, is, is really, it, it excites me. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here again. It's been a pleasure to have you on the show. You're welcome. And if you have a question that you want answered, go to questions at chantalwayway.com. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.